In this video I will cover how activity inputs and especially outputs work in Mark's fabric data pipelines and how you can use them to build some extra logic to your pipelines. This and much more covered shortly. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Marx Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Marx Fabric data engineering and today I want to cover activity inputs and outputs in more detail. This video is also part of my Marx Fabric data engineering series and link to the entire playlist can be found in the description. But now let's talk about activity inputs and outputs. That is a topic that we have used already in the previous videos. But today we are going to dive a bit deeper into it and clarify a few things about it. This is a topic that is better explained using examples. So without further ado, let's fire up Fabric. Now I have the Fabric open here. Let's first open up my lake house where I have created this new folder with two subfolders, source and destination. In our source folder we have this one file called file1.txt and in this file I just have random content here. I'm just going to use this file to explain few topics about activity inputs and outputs. But for us to demonstrate those we have to create a new data pipeline. So let's hit create and let's find data pipeline here. And then we're going to name that data pipeline according to our naming conventions. And after that we are going to start with the blank canvas and we want to add just a copy activity to this canvas. And we can just name this copy data, copy data file one. And now let's configure this copy data activity to copy that one file from that source folder to that destination folder using binary copy. We have done this thing in the previous videos multiple times before, so I'm not going to explain each step in that detail this time. So let's configure our source, let's find our lake house, it is there, and then we are going to use the file section, and then we have to input our file path where our file is, and then we want to input our file name there, and we are going to use binary copy. So everything should be configured correctly to the source side now. Then let's configure the destination. We're going to use the same lake house this time, and change the section to files and then the destination path we are going to input that and add the file name there. So basically now we have configured our copy data correctly and we can click run and see what happens. And now our copy data is running should take a little moment it to run. And now we can already start to talk about activity inputs and outputs while this is running. Basically when we configure this copy data we are configuring some things to the source and to the destination. Basically these things that we are configuring here are the inputs for this activity. And now our copy data has finished and here we can actually find the inputs that went to this activity in JSON format. We can check this out. So basically here is the activity input that went to that activity that is basically the configuration for that activity that tells what needs to be done in that execution. So here we can see some familiar things that we configured there like that the source type is binary and we are using lakehouse and our lakehouse name and some workspace IDs etc here that are hidden in that view. But yeah, here are the inputs that went into that copy data activity. But the more important topic today is going to be the activity outputs. So almost every activity in the data factory or in these pipelines that does something has these outputs. And here in the output tab we can see the outputs that came out from that copy data activity. Basically these tell what happened during that execution. Here we have information for example about how much data was read and how much data was written and how many files were read and how many files were written and some other information about that copy data activity. And now you could be wondering what is the point of this video today? The point today is that we can actually use this information in the following activities to build some logic. 
For example, very useful information here could be that how many files were written to the destination. In some cases, for example, if you are reading files using a wildcard, it could be that there is zero or more files coming in. And then you might want to have some logic based on that, that how many files were copied forward. Basically, if you have zero files coming in, then maybe you don't want to do anything in the following step. So you could have an if activity that would say that no things need to be done if the file amount is zero. And now we can try to illustrate that situation here in the pipeline. So let's add if activity to this pipeline and then let's add just wait activities to those branches so we can see to which branch the execution went and let's name those wait activities according to branch they are in. So let's have their false. And then we want to configure an expression for this if activity. And we can use dynamic content to do that. And here we can see that we have these activity outputs here. And this time we're interested in this copy data file one activity output. And what this would do, this here, this would reference that object that we saw there. So basically this would reference this object that we have here. So if we would, for example, like to get the files written here, we would have to say dot files written after that activity output. So it would get that property there. So we can do that. So if we want to use that there, we would say this, and then we would say files written and this would then get that amount of files written here but if you remember if condition expects to have a boolean value and now we would just give it an integer value here so we can do a logic check to check here whether or not the amount of files written was zero or not so basically we can use a greater function greater function there to check is the amount of files written greater than zero. And now this logic will return true if the files written is greater than zero and if it's zero it will return false. And now we can just save this and then run our pipeline again. And now our pipeline has succeeded and we can see that our pipeline went to that true branch. Meaning that this condition here evaluated to true. And now I will clarify a bit what happened here. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more marked fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's clarify the situation what happened a bit more. So we had that copy data activity here first. And this activity has some inputs and it has some outputs. And when this activity runs, it provides us that output that tells what happened during the execution. And we get this long list of data out from that activity. And then it is possible to reference that data using this syntax that I showed to you. So basically activity and then the activity name dot output and then the dot uh, information that we want to take from that output. In this case, we want to have that files written. And then we had some logic based on that files written, whether it's zero or not. Okay, but yeah. And also keep in mind that these activities have to be in a logical order in order this to work. So if we would have this copy data activity after this if condition, of course, this logic doesn't work because when the pipeline executes, the logical flow would execute the if condition first, and then we don't have that activity outputs available from that copy data yet so we can see the error here that it doesn't work this way because it cannot be referenced. But yeah using these activity outputs is a very convenient way to build some logic to your pipelines without using additional activities. For example other way to check if the file exists in the destination folder would be using get metadata activity but in this case it would be pointless because we can get that information from the copy data activity itself and its output that how many files were written so there is no need to do an additional check using get metadata so we can reduce the amount of activities by utilizing these activity outputs in our pipeline. 
I hope you now have an understanding how activity inputs and outputs work in the data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. If you would like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.